Hey there, YouTube. Myron Golden here, and I am here with one of my Inner Circle clients and one of my VIP Day clients, and um, the genius, the business maven that teaches people how to get government contracts, teaches entrepreneurs, high-level entrepreneurs. It doesn't matter if you're an author, if you're a photographer, if you're a coach, if you are a speaker, if you are a landscaper, if you're in real estate, whatever, a builder, she teaches you how to get government contracts and how to make up in one sale what it would take you 100 normal sales or 1,000 normal sales uh, to do in revenue. So help me welcome to our platform and our YouTube channel, Carwana Dyson. Hey, Carwana, so glad you're here. Thank you so much for having me. My pleasure, my pleasure. Thank you. Um, uh, so I met Carwana, well, I met her a long time ago, but we really got a chance to connect when she and her husband and their baby, they were on a VIP day flight with us from Tampa to Los Angeles back in September. And she was talking about this stuff. And I am not even kidding. My mind was blown. My mind was just like a million pieces all over that airplane, right? And um, because she teaches like people like me, people like you, how to get government contracts and the government needs entrepreneurs and authors and coaches and landscapers and drywallers and photographers and videographers and all kinds of folks to get like to to do work for the government and to do that via government contracts so Carwana um, how did you, first of all um, let me ask you this question how did you get started as an entrepreneur and did you start in the arena of government contracts uh, okay, great. So I absolutely did not start in the arena government of government contracts. Mm -hmm. I actually started a little over 20 years ago as an entrepreneur simply because I got tired of um, working for somebody else. And mm. not just because I was working for someone else, but I felt like I wasn't able to utilize my skill set mm -hmm. um, in the way that I, I know that I could on mm -hmm. the job. And um, I had started having children and I felt like I was spending all this time working for someone else and I had a very little time to go home, to spend mm. time with my family. By the time I got home, I was getting going home to cook and go to sleep. That's all I had time to wow. do. And so I was like, man, I'm my, is this what life, <laughs> you know, mm. is this what it is? And not to for mention, a lot of people it is though. Yeah, it, 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 for me it's just- I, it You wasn't feeling it. I wasn't feeling it. Although I was making really good money to do that, I felt like I had a lot more to offer to life. Mm. Um, and on top of that, after going to school for however many years to get a college degree, I was pretty much making the same amount of money as someone who dropped out of high school and just built their way up to the top. So I was like, wait, what just happened here? Mm. <laughs> you know? And so that's how I really first got started in, in as an entrepreneur um, because I wanted to live my dream and be able to, um, you know, be home first, mm -hmm. you know, be able to spend time with my children, quality time and kind of build my life around so, that. So it sounds like you were, disillusioned on two fronts. One, um, you didn't have enough time to spend with your family. Right. Two, you spent all this time, all this effort, all this money to get a degree, and then you graduated, and there were people who didn't go to college and do all that same sacrifice you did, yes. who were getting paid the same exact amount as you were, so now you're disillusioned on two fronts. You said, so it sounds like you came to a conclusion there must be a better way. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, I, I felt... I felt like I had been duped, like really, mm. um, when I discovered that other people were making the same amount of money and I'm walking in, popping my collar, like I got a college degree, you know, mm. like I made it. I'm, mm. To me, that that's, mm. you made it, right? You made it, yeah. But I realized that I was duped. Like it was like one of those aha moments that, um, you know, they say, go to school, get a college degree, you're gonna, you know, get top pay and all that stuff. And it's like, so it was just like the same thing of like discovering Christopher Columbus didn't really discover America. And you're like, there oh, were people already here when he got here. There was that people part? already here. <laughs> and so it was one of those moments. Mm. Like for those Santa Claus ain't real, y'all. Santa Claus ain't real. <laughs> he ain't, the they, Easter bunny is Easter not bunny, a thing. None okay? of that stuff. Right? Right. <laughs> so, yeah. So, yeah, it, it was definitely an eye opener um, mm. for me. Yeah. Wow. Okay. And so you decided to become an entrepreneur. So what did you do? You just quit your job and said, I'm out of here. I'm going to go start my own business. I didn't I didn't, actually, I didn't necessarily quit right away. It's crazy because like I, I despise going to work so much that I found all every loophole to stay off work while getting paid. Right. Which means that i I discovered that if I stayed off work for, you know, three to four days and get a doctor's note, they're still going to pay me the same pay 
and I don't have to be at work. I could be at home. And so I start working however many PDLs, paid leave time I can get off, how many sick days I can get. Like I, I just stayed off work a lot. <laughs> and mm. I was like, well, I don't know if I want to continue like, you know, doing this. Like what's the purpose of going to work if you don't love what you do? Mm. Um, and so, so basically after that, I just kind of decided that I wanted to start a business, but I wasn't really sure exactly what I wanted to do in business. And mm -hmm. so um, I, and I tried a lot of things. I tried MLMs, like mm. multi-level marketing. I tried, um, you know, of course, Mary Kay was one of the first that uh, actually taught, taught me the principles mm -hmm. that I wanted to live by in business, which was God first, family second, and then mm. everything else around that. Mm. Um, and then I tried, like, I tried a whole bunch of things. But ultimately, I said, well, what, what have I done consistently all my life or mm -hmm. what has been consistent throughout my life that I love and have a passion for. And I went to school for actual uh, video production, broadcast, television. And so I was like, well, it's the video thing. So I started my, um, initially I started a business with that. Um, and then- Shooting videos. Yep, shooting. What year was that? <laughs> that was, I mean, I went, shoot, 2003, I wanna say. So we're talking about VHS or or those yeah. mini V those mini DV tapes. DV, yep, mini it was. DVs. Yep, it was mini DVs. Yeah, actually, it's crazy because when I went to school for it, we we edited it on VHS, so it was like it was analog before it was digital, digital right? And then it evolved to like the VHS. So when you an when you and when you edit on on DVD, if I'm I don't yeah. know if I, you would have to literally cut and splice stuff it's, back together, like physically, yeah, because well, it was a real image. It was it was real live, and it's like if you mess up, you got to start all over. It wasn't like Whew. it is today, <laughs> you know. Whew. But I, I had got. Can you really imagine not being able to edit on your iPhone, y'all? Yeah, no. I mean, this is crazy. It's crazy, like man, the evolution is real. <laughs> wow. But I had got really good at that, um, and so I just started a business um, with the one thing that I felt like I was really passionate about. Um, I, it reminded me of when I was when I was a kid. You remember speaking of tapes, like the cassette tapes. So when those <laughs> when I was a kid, it was eight track tapes, but I do remember. <laughs> well, cassette. Yeah. <laughs> well, back in my day, <laughs> right? Back, it was, back when they used to have these things day, called cassette tapes. Back in my <laughs> day, like we had the, the my mom and them had the eight tracks, and uh, I had cassette. I saw tapes. what you did there. <laughs> I saw what you did there, but that's okay. That's no, okay. But it was cool because you know eight tracks was cool. Still, they mm -hmm. was still they still had eight tracks. You just couldn't rewind. But, you had yeah. to fast forward all the yeah. way to the same song you wanted to hear again. Exactly. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but I remember like we used to have these 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 tapes, cassette tapes, and we used to you know have a playlist on it, and every so often the the tape used to pop. Right. And, and then, I was so good at splicing back the tape seamlessly, and you'll never know it, that it had I popped. I used to do that heart. same thing. That's and crazy. I said, and so it's crazy how I ended up in um, video production, and I started editing, which is the exact, exact same, same thing. thing. Yeah. And I was like, okay, well, that's the I one. That's what do I, this. Yeah, I've been I doing that the, all my life. I need exactly. to start a business in that. So, right. yeah, that's that's what I, I wow. ultimately, that's what I ended up doing. Wow. Okay. So, so how did you go from video editing shooting video too or just editing? shooting shooting yep. and editing, editing. video mm -hmm. to government contracts that's a that's, that's a, i don't know maybe it's me, a huge maybe leap. it's just me but it seems like a like the grand canyon you know um it's, it's definitely a huge leap um so first let me say when i went to school uh, for business i went to school for business and communications and broadcast so i, I have a bunch of totally a bunch of overrated degrees and stuff mm. like that but when i went to school i was t i was taught in business, it takes you know two to five or three to five years to turn a profit, and you have to have startup capital, and you have to go get business loans. You have to do all these things. So I really believe that. So mm. when I first started my production company, I built it that way, and I built my production company off what I heard um, was a bootstrap, you know, bootstrap um, budget, right? You take a little bit of money and you invest it, and in, you reinvest it, and all those things. So it was really hard the first few years, like first five years in business. Like I barely was making ends meet. I barely was making like 15 to 20,000 a year, but I was working like 50 to 60 hours chasing customers, mm. right? Um, and I said, this, this gotta be a better way. Like after so much time, I was like, it's gotta be a better, better way than this, right? Um, but it wasn't until like I had been married before and I was, I was on the verge of a, getting a divorce, of course, those types of things happen. And I was trying to figure out how was I going to be able to pay my bills off fifteen to twenty thousand dollars a year. I wasn't mm. going to be able to do that and provide for my children. Mm. And so I had heard from one of the first black billionaires that I had met personally that 
how you build a business is by selling to the government. I said, well, what, what, what do you mean by that? Like, I don't sell weapons. I don't, you know, because that's right. what, what, you what, think. Is, what do you think? Yeah, what dude. are you talking about? I like, you know, <laughs> but I had asked him because I was <laughs> like, because I, you know, I was freelancing. I had started freelancing and that's how I was making the 15 to 20,000 freelancing for other small businesses, building out their portfolio, doing videos and photography stuff for them. And so he really just told me, I said, well, how did you become the billionaire? Right. <laughs> um, most of uh, most people don't want to ask a person that question of who's successful. How did you do it? Because in our culture, or at least in my culture or community, like that's like you don't taboo. ask that. It's taboo. You don't ask the person how they did it, right? Um, but you know what? I was just so sick and tired of trying to figure things out mm. and, and working my fingers to the bone and had nothing to show for it. And here I had like three children, my son, and you know, about to get a divorce. My son was walking, getting ready to, you know, he basically had holes at the bottom of his shoes and I was like, I can't provide. And that was like one of the biggest like grief mm. moments for me. Like, mm. I can't even, I can't even do nothing for my son because I got all these bills and all this stuff. And so for me, I asked him. Right, that that that's what gave me the courage. Yeah, to taboo ask or him, no taboo. How did I need you to put some it? shoes on my baby? How did you do it? And so he looked at me, he gave me a serious look, and he said, um, "This these are the words that literally changed my life." He said, "The same thing that you're doing for me, you can do it for the government and make tons of money doing." It. I said, "What do you what do you mean by that?" Right. Um, he said, well, don't you know you do photography services and you do video services? There are trillion dollar projects where they have to use women owned businesses or minority businesses and small businesses like yours. I said, OK, so I actually made the commitment to myself to go learn everything about that, because for me, I needed to change my life and I needed to do it sooner rather than later. Is, isn't it interesting how sometimes like being in enough pain Yes. Is the exact catalyst yes. you need mm -hmm. to take your life to another level. Absolutely. And it sounds like to yeah. me, it like if you wouldn't have been in that situation where you're going through a divorce, yes. you can't put shoes on your children, you can't pay your bills, yes. you're making twenty thousand a year, not a month, a year. Yeah. Fifteen, twenty thousand a year. It yeah. sounds like if you hadn't gone through that situation, you may not have even had enough intestinal fortitude to ask him that question. I was playing. Like I, I wouldn't I would have had enough to uh, uh, just to ask that question. But also I felt like I was playing in business because I mm. wasn't ser I, I, I really wasn't serious enough. Right. Mm. Because I was still running around chasing customers, doing the things that I knew didn't work and mm. I was doing them anyway. Right. Mm. Um, and so that's why I came to the conclusion back then that regardless of what situation I'm going through, I, I learned to trust God. Right. I, mm. I said I, I would start telling myself, God, I trust you. I don't understand the season that I'm in. Mm. I don't understand what I'm going through or how or why I'm going through it. But I trust you. And and I know that you told me when I was a child, you spoke to my spirit that that I was going to be great. Like I was there's greatness within me and, 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 I'm, and I'm ready. So mm. I start having those types mm. of conversations with myself rather than, oh, woe is me. Mm. Come on now. <laughs> oh, they don't have anything for me. Oh, they won't allow me to get this loan because my credit is bad. And like all these different things that we can talk about why the world um, is set up or basically it's set up to keep you out or mm. keep minority or black and brown people out of wealth, right? I could have used all those excuses and I did for a long time, but mm. it wasn't until I came to the realization that I have to be the one to make something happen for myself. Go ahead with your bad self. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, so you decided you're going to go into government contracts. You just researched everything mm -hmm. on your own. And so, it sounds like you you dove in, you got out of the, okay, I've got a degree. So you got out of the formal education swimming pool yeah. into the self-education swimming yes, pool. Yes, it's crazy. And you got into that pool and you started learning. Yeah. Uh -huh. And you applied what you learned. Yeah, absolutely. I actually, I actually, so, so when I started self-educating myself, mm -hmm. it all came full circle to mm. me. The things about what I learned in school, I felt like, that's a lie. <laughs> and the things mm. about like what I learned about Christopher Columbus discovering America, I'm like, that's a lie. I'm like, if all of these things that we've been taught by society is a lie, then I need to learn more truths. And mm. that, that's when I went into self-study mode. And what I discovered was it does not take two to five years to build a business. You can be highly profitable in your first 30, 60, 90 days if 100%. you're selling to the right person. 100%. And what I learned about the government is they're obligated. They already have this money pools of money like we're talking about multiple trillions of dollars that they've already earmarked to spend with entrepreneurs right that's the only way to get the money say is if you have less. a business like you know say less you so had in, me at hello so instead of chasing customers 
Here's a customer who's already chasing you. They've already raised their hand and say, hey, come hey, get this I've got money. all this money. Come get I it. I want to pay you, especially, <laughs> I want to pay you if you're an entrepreneur, if you yeah. have a business, a small mm -hmm. business, number one. Number two, if you're run by a minority. Mm -hmm. Number three, if you're run by a woman. Yes. Number four, if you're run by a person with a disability. Yeah. I want to pay you. Any one of those, Any one great. Of those. All four of those, yeah. your chances are better than anybody Absolutely. else's. Absolutely. That's how it sounds to me. That's exactly what it is. I okay. start checking those boxes. And then, so, so, so I started actually... Um, initially, when I first heard of it, I didn't really know what I was doing. So I said, you know what, I'm going to do it anyway. All the mm. mistakes I've learned from, right? So I, so for, for everyone that's, you know, there's a lot of times I hear about people, oh, I tried this and it doesn't work. Well, you have to keep trying until you figure out how to make it work. And so for me, it took a couple years for me to continue trying to get the no's. And, and I was like, what am I doing wrong? So I start going back and repeating and rinsing, repeating and, and moving some things around until I finally landed my first contract with literally, which literally changed my life. And it, and it happened like the day I signed my divorce paper, it was like final, right? Like two days later, it was like, here's the $70,000 contract for the 28 days of work that you're gonna do for us taking photos, right? And I was taking like- Taking photos with taking pictures photos with the camera. And taking photos. And it was like two hours on site, 28 days, $70,000. That's 56 hours. So it was what I was making in a year when I was working for a corporation, right? Working 40 hour work weeks in overtime, replace that in a 28 day period working for myself and selling to the right customer. Woo! $70,000, 28 days of work. Yeah. Same, <laughs> like, so there's, you just said so, so I, I don't know if you are getting this, but I hope you are getting this. <laughs> yes. She's telling you, she's like letting you in on insider secrets. She said, the government has trillions with a TR, trillions of dollars that are earmarked. That means they can't spend that money on nothing but you. Exactly. Right? Yes. I'm, no, you're I'm not, right. I'm, you're I'm, right. I'm, I just want to make sure I'm Absolutely. picking up everything you're putting down. Absolutely. And you went out there and said, I got a camera. Yep. I'm a small business that's owned by a minority woman. Yes, yes. And I want to go take some pictures for y'all, and I'm only going to charge you $70,000 for it. 28 days. And it's crazy because... <laughs> because we would think in in the real world, no that business is going to no pay you $70,000 for 28 days it worth does, of work. It does not happen. Right. No. Nope. So <laughs> how, like, so, and so I was having this conversation with you when we were on the plane, uh -huh. and a light bulb for me came on. So I'm going to tell y'all the light bulb that came on for me. So, so... <laughs> She was talking, I was like, wait a minute. The government, as a buyer, is the opposite of a consumer right. or, an, or a business. Because a consumer or a business, when they're buying something, they have a vested interest in spending as little money as possible and getting as much value as possible. Mm -hmm. But the government's the exact opposite. Yeah. They are incentivized yeah. to spend as much money as possible even if it means overpaying for something by two, three, four, five, ten times. And please correct me if no, I'm wrong. No, that's correct. No, ten times. Absolutely. Paying ten times more for a service than it's worth, than, yep. than, than the average person in the market. Because if they don't spend all that money, yeah. they get less money from the federal government the next year as a subsidy. Absolutely. So the, gov the federal government is subsidizing local governments mm -hmm. to waste money yep. so they can get more money from Yep. The federal government, so yep. the go federal government can come and take more money from us yep. in taxes. Absolutely, uh, man. When I heard that, <laughs> y'all don't even know how I was through. <laughs> it was a wrap. I was like, 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 shut up, like, stop. No, don't even. What? Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. And so, mm -hmm. so, I don't. I, I hope y'all are getting this. Now, I have, I have, I, my customers are entrepreneurs, and so we have. I have customers that pay me a lot of money, mm -hmm. right? Um, our VIP days are now $350,000 for somebody to come spend the day with me. So that's significant amount of money. Uh, we've got masterminds that are anywhere from, who knows, um, $20,000 upwards of a million dollars a year, right? Mm -hmm. but, but, like, when I create a coaching program, when I, I'm sorry, not a coaching program, when I create an offer for the United States government, for the, because I'm I'm going straight for 
the, like the federal government. I don't, I'm gonna skip all this local stuff. Yeah. <laughs> but the, but when I create an offer for them, I could potentially make millions, tens of millions, hundreds of millions, or a billion or multiple billions of dollars mm -hmm. in my first year if the offer is right. Absolutely. Because the money is there. The money is there. Yep. You're right. <laughs> I'm so through. Uh, I, and I don't know if y'all have heard me say this before, mm -hmm. but I've said this. I know you've probably heard me say it. Uh -huh. But like when I started in business, I was B2C, business to customers. Yep. Then I went B2B, business to business. My next move in business is B2G, B2G business to government. government. And now I've got the person who is my B2G coach, right? So I'm yes. one of your clients now, yes. right? So yes. B2G, where you teach people how to get government contracts. And now we're in the process of learning all of that stuff Absolutely. so that we can go out and make offers to the government and have them pay us. It does, it, it's just a, it's a no-brainer. And, and like most people have never heard of B2G business model. They, they hear about B2B or B2C. C, right. Um, but the B2G is like one of the biggest kept secrets that can 100%. literally, it can literally transform your life your bank account, your zip your, code, your everything. Your family for generations. Generations to come. Absolutely. Right. You get yeah. if you you can figure out the right government contract mm -hmm. for the right niche inside the government, mm -hmm. and then you can do a test like a test sample yep. and prove the con proof of concept. Yep. They'll throw money at you for the rest of your life. Absolutely. Absolutely. Child, please. You don't have to tell me <laughs> three times. I heard you the first time. Yeah. And and it's like so the government has like a fiscal budget every right. single year. Like and so the fiscal year for the federal government normally starts in October and it ends in the end of September. September. And so what normally happens, um, because they have to spend this money from green to red, when they, when, at the end of the year, towards the end of the year, um, when they still are in the green, if you're in position, they start calling people, hey, can you come, basically, they don't say come get this money, but basically that's what they're saying. Like, hey, we have this money. I see that you you sell or, or the service you offer is X, Y, and Z, and we, you know, we need to get rid of this money. Can you send us a, a quote or proposal for it? So it's just like, that's a customer that's picking up the phone and saying, hey, I want to give you this money. It's crazy. Didn't you tell me about, when we were on the plane, you told me about um, somebody who, the government called and wanted some toothpaste or something. I don't remember what it yeah. was, something wild like that. Uh -huh. Yeah, no, so I, I say I have a colleague who actually sells toothbrushes. They make toothbrushes. millions of dollars selling toothbrushes to the government. And like you, like you, like you, I mean, <laughs> I'm so dizzy I mean, right now. Like, what do you, how you make millions of dollars selling toothbrushes? Because they buy it in bulk. So the government buys in bulk. So if it's a product, they buy it in bulk, like, They'll buy it a million or 10 million at a time because it's crazy like that. Who are they buying? And, Who's the government buying toothbrushes for? Well, the people who are in the military. Like, okay, so here's the thing. The government cannot buy its own stuff. It has to outsource to businesses for whatever they need, for food, for like toothbrushes, toilet paper, uh, supplies, services. Everything is outsourced to businesses. And so... Um, and so basically, you know, you have the Navy, you have the military, you have the Army, you have people who the are Marines, you have the Air, in Force. Marine, Air Force. And so they need and these they have things, prisons. right? And then you have prisons and they have um, commissaries, you know, um, those convenience stores and things. Uh, that on nature. bases? On bases. Yeah. So supply stores and all that stuff. And so, yeah, that that is where why they buy it <laughs> and where it goes. Yeah. Absolutely. For toothbrushes. For toothbrushes. Millions, millions of, do millions millions of, of dollars, dollars mm -hmm. a year selling toothbrushes to the government. Yep. I have heard everything I ever need to hear for the rest of my natural <laughs> life. <They're laughs> like, what? what? Yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's like some of the craziest things. Like, so I have um, actually worked with a, um, with a business owner um, and she actually does hair. That's what she does. And, and so most of the time I get the question, well, how does the government buy my stuff? I, I'm like, government, the government buys literally everything. There's not... Nothing. There's nothing for sale There's nothing that the government doesn't buy. That, that the government doesn't buy. If you can sell it to a person, you can sell it to the government. It's just about positioning and understanding how to position that, right? And so she does hair and she's trying to figure out, well, how can I how can I take this business? I love what you, you know, what you teach about <laughs> um changing, you know, creating generational wealth and leveraging the government contracts. It's earmarked money for me. I want to learn how to get in. And so I showed her exactly how to position herself and now she sells prosthetic wigs to the government. Yes, the government will buy wigs they buy hats it's amazing why do they buy wigs I, um okay I, good yeah. question yeah so like you have what is, people, what's the government gonna do with a wig so you have people who have been you know they have veteran benefits and stuff like the veterans they come home from war maybe they had surgeries and things of that nature and so they have people who have alopecia like who have government veteran benefits 
And so that's what they use the the wigs for. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so yeah. So in fact, like some of the some of the craziest contracts that that I've seen. In fact, a barber there was a, there's a contract where a barber was awarded eight hundred and ninety five thousand dollars for one year to cut hair in the federal prisons. Um, there are like hundreds of thousands of dollars in contracts for <laughs> bottled water. Bottled water, the same water that we see people with carts at ballparks selling it for a dollar, maybe two dollars. Well, the government buys that in bulk and they'll give it to you like a half a million dollar contract to provide the same water to the government. It's crazy. So basically you're saying, and maybe you're not saying this, but it sounds like you're saying to me, uh -huh. a person who doesn't yet sell to the government, that I can become a middleman between the government and my manufacturer absolutely and make an absolute fortune absolutely absolutely it's just all about positioning so what about okay so so what about all these people out here who have these e-commerce stores and they're selling e-commerce products to individuals are you telling me somebody can sign up with like an Alibaba account import all the stuff mm -hmm. from Alibaba yeah. or a, a US manufacturer whoever yeah and then sell, sell it, it to the United government. States government and Absolutely. you're getting paid because you know where to order it from yes. and where to ship it to? Absolutely. That's it. That's it. And and, and so there was a young man. His name is Wesley. Um, in, in 2019, during, during COVID, this young man, 16 years old, found a contract, paid him millions of dollars selling hand sanitizers um, and, to the and face masks to the government. And so anybody can do this stuff. You know, it's just really about knowledge. But not only does the government buy products. Y'all, can y'all see how done I am? I'm through. <laughs> I'm through. Not, look, not only does the government buy products, but they also purchase services. So for everyone that's like doing accounting, bookkeeping, landscaping, like all of these different janitorial services, the government will buy your service as well. So you see how we have like all these cameras and lighting and all this stuff, mm -hmm. microphone. The government buys all that stuff. Podcast services. Like they, they will buy your service to do a podcast for government agencies. It's crazy. Absolutely. Run the camera, do some editing, all that stuff. In fact, one of the largest contracts that I've been on was a million dollars for me to shoot and edit videos. How many videos? Like 40 million? I mean, like, OK, so no, not 40 million. Let's just say like this one video that I've shot and it took me like a week to edit it was like two hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> like like you. I mean, you can't even like. If you try to look for... What are you for, talking about? That's what I'm saying. If you try to look for an individual person that, that you want to sell your video production services, they yeah. first of all, a lot of people can't, can't afford that. They don't have 200000 They don't have 200000 They They barely want to pay 5000 right? They'd be like, give me a hookup for $1,000 or 1500 or something like that. But to, to do the same service for the government, you can walk home with a... A one a two hundred thousand dollar check for that same one video, and so 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 I have to ask, what was the video of? So it was uh some video training. So at agencies at the Department of Transportation, they were doing trainings. They were actually training um, entrepreneurs how to do business with the Department of Transportation. And so I was the videographer who taped those sessions and edited it so that they can actually provide it. And so and they paid you two hundred thousand dollars for that for one video for one video because you shot and then edited shot, it in edited. a week and then you invoiced them and then they sent you a check for two hundred thousand. It was simply because I, there was a couple re-edit requests on top of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm stupefied, dumbfounded. <laughs> you know, I was stupefied when I first when I, the first contract that I landed for seventy seventy thousand. I was stupefied. I was dumbfounded. I was like, wait, let me hurry up and cash this check because I don't know if it's real. <laughs> I don't know if they gonna come back and take it back. No, but I but I had to remove that block from my mind that the service that I was offering is so valuable. And the people that I've been chasing all this time trying to convince them, like they just wasn't the right customer. They weren't the right customers. Me, right? And so, yeah, your the, the government will pay you your value. They don't pay you. They'll pay you more than your value, sounds like. They actually they will help they, you. Uh, they they'll help you, you identify a new value. <laughs> that part, yes. Uh, what? That, that part, yes, absolutely, absolutely. Oh, <laughs> oh. It's, I feel like, I literally feel like I just discovered a gold mine. Mm -hmm. It is. A, it, it is truly a gold mine. So, like, I've got, a, I've got a, a guy that I play golf with here in Tampa. Mm -hmm. He has a construction company that's like a fifty million dollar construction company, and all he does is build colleges for the government, build colleges, college buildings mm -hmm. for the government. And he's he's like one of the richest guys I know. Wow. Yeah. Like like mm -hmm. crazy, like ridiculous, 
like crazy rich. Yeah. 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 That kind of rich. Yeah. The kind of rich like, wait, what, bro? Wait, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and the crazy, the, the, the best part about doing business with the government is that they always pay. And regardless of what's going on, whether it's a recession or a pandemic or whatever, they pay more. Like, you know, when all businesses, most businesses are shutting down during these <laughs> economic hard times, right? During these times of economic <laughs> hardship, right? Most businesses are shutting down because they're they're depending on foot traffic, consumers, B to C, right? Mm. Depending on those people are in the house, they stop spending because they're afraid of what's going on in the world. But the mm. government says, well, well, I'm gonna set aside fifty four billion for homelessness XYZ. or fifty four billion for the upcoming recession or fifty four billion for the for the pandemic, right? Set to just to say a number. They spend more money to create solutions and they're looking for businesses to help them solve those problems that are happening. And so it's a it's truly a recession proof business model, um, but it also gives you consistent income and sustainability that you don't have. When you ain't you're, gonna get anywhere else. You're not going to get that anywhere else. Absolutely. So what's the most remarkable government contract story you somebody, you know, a client? Um, um, somebody who's a contemporary of yours, somebody else who does what you do. What's, what's tell me some, give me some remarkable. <laughs> I can't be, like you, Carwana. I uh -huh. can't believe okay. people got a government. This person got a government contract doing this, this. for this amount of money. I'm gonna say okay. So so a couple stories. So I I work with a lot of um, entrepreneurs, showing them how to do this. Like for the first time, they're landing like millions of dollars, quarter of a million, like they're, they're life changing income. And so one young lady, uh, a couple years ago, um, she actually came to me and she was like, you know, I don't even have no money, but I'm a, you know, but I believe that this, this is going to be for me. So she pulled out of her 401k, right? So she got really resourceful uh, because she saw an opportunity to change her life. And she actually signed up to sell travel services during the pandemic to the government. However, travel was not, you know, airport, you know, the airports were like shut down. They were like ghost stuff. towns. Yeah. yeah, it was ghost towns. So it was really hard for her to find an opportunity in travel. However, when you're in a position, when it comes to the government, like you can sell anything, right? You just got to get creative. And so she saw an opportunity um, for health breast care exams, right? Yet she's in travel. She's not a doctor. Right. She's not a physician in no kind of way, but she saw an opportunity and then she went to partner with someone else who was, who, a, doc who was a doctor. They went on that contract together and she landed her first quarter of a million dollar contract doing that. That was remarkable to me. I'm like, wow, she's not even just a simple just fact. Just look, just the simple fact that she didn't go on that. She didn't go through those those opportunities and say, well, nothing in travel. Well, I guess it's not for me. Right. Mm. She was like, well, what opportunities are there? She like, tapped into her she creativity. She tapped into her creativity. And that's the type of mindset you have to have, because a lot of times people give up too soon. What about. So I got one for you. Uh -huh. So what about entertainers and singers <laughs> and comedians? Um, OK. And I'm glad that you said that. So, um, ironically, I just thought of that. So that okay. just came to my mind. So I have a lot. So I grew up in a church. So I have a lot of friends who are musicians and like ministers of music and things of that nature. And so I actually started like doing some research. I'm like, well, I wonder if there's anything for them. And what I've discovered was um, not only do they have multiple six figure contracts for ministers of music, like musician services for their chapels. Right. But with those types of contracts <laughs> what look, for the chapel what are you talking but about but with those type of contracts so if you're doing it for a church you probably make you know let's just say you make 30 40,000 a year and you got to be at every church service every right. rehearsal all this all, all, all that, this all that time, right there and some, all that right, right? cuz i know how it is and then her, like they got to like be leading at, a choir is like herding cats is <laughs> exactly but they for that for multiple six figures doing the same services with the government one Sunday service and one rehearsal a week. That's two days out of the week. That's eight days out of the month for multiple six figures. You still have your life. You can still do your side hustles and all that other stuff. Yeah. So and they probably have chaplains for the military, and then they have chaplains for, for prisons, the, for and they the have army, chaplains for for the hospitals. It's it's the chapels for every for everything. In fact, um, there are like. <laughs> So are at events. Are y'all seeing this? <laughs> are y'all hearing this lady? 
Yes, okay. and so so at events, they actually, um, at uh, government events, right, they hire event planning What is companies. a government event? What does that okay. mean? So, so government events, so it could be a banquet, okay. it could be um, inaugural, or whatever. White whatever House type function, of, whatever, whatever, yeah. whatever. Yeah, so when they have these ceremonies or types of events, they hire event planning companies. Well, normally that comes with hiring an entertainment company, too. Right. Someone to come sing, to perform, a DJ. So musicians and people who are in entertainment can absolutely get a contract. You just have to understand how to, you know, position yourself to do that. Um, they also like those event planning um, contracts also come with like uh, there's contracts within contracts. Right. These, these are all the things that I teach, like it's contracts within contracts. You have to just kind of think outside the box. Well, normally when those they're, they, they're having those events, they, they hire caterers for food, right? So that's a contract within the event planning contract. So if caterers. you're the event contractor, you can get a gov contract for the government for the, for, the event. for the event and for the food, and, for the and then food. you can subcontract the food out to somebody who does catering. Absolutely. And then you make the difference. And the so you're a middleman between the middleman and the manufacturer of the government, and then you're a middleman between the subcontract. Yeah. What? So we're talking about security, we're talking about decorations, we're talking about all this stuff, yeah. And then you're hiring a photographer and a videographer on top of that, and so... You just, just, you know, ideally when you, when you're working with an individual, so let's just say you're doing a baby shower or those type of events or something like that, right? They pay you one thing for your one service, what, you know, one fee for your one service. Well, when you're doing business with the government, you actually itemize all that, right? I'm doing the event planning, the coordination, the security, the, um, the food, the service, the janitorial cleanups, like all that stuff. So that's how event planning with the government, like you can have hundreds of thousands of dollars in a day for one event. Hundreds of hundreds thousands, of, thousands of, dollars of dollars in a day, in a day for one, one event. event. Absolutely. Kind of makes you want to be an event planner, don't it? <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So tell me another success story. That You're already like, you already messed up all my hair, rearranged all the <laughs> furniture in my head. So yeah. tell me another success yeah. story. Some, like somebody else that you know that got a crazy government contract okay. or something. Okay, so another young man that I work with, um, his name is Remy. In fact, I started working with him earlier this year. And already, like within... First of all, he he's he beat the record of landing the contract within record time. So ideally, I like to tell people it may take up to like six months before you can really um, start landing your contracts. But for some people, it's sooner because of how they work. It's their mm. work ethic, right, mm. that allows you to be able to do that sooner. And so for him, he just had an amazing work ethic. He landed his first contract in four weeks of learning how um, to do it right in within four weeks and the first contract was 750,000 and then a month later he landed a contract for another 300,000 that's his first million first million dollars in government contracts his first year his trying. first in his first two contracts yeah in his first two contracts two yeah. sales yeah okay so let me ask you a question you're an entrepreneur when was the last time you made two sales and made over a million dollars this is why business to government is so powerful so if you're watching this on YouTube and you're thinking, well, what does this have to do with me? I think she's explaining it. Carwana's explaining it <laughs> so eloquently. Like, it doesn't matter what you sell or what you do as an, entre as an entrepreneur. If you sell it to the government, you're going to make more money. Absolutely. Period. <laughs> so there. Yes. All right. So uh, give us one more. Give us one more. Okay. I want to ask you some other questions. But give us one more crazy success. Because this this... Oh, by the way, let me. Ask, what does Remy do? What does he? What does he do that okay. he gets oh, 750,000? So the first, so the first contract that he landed was actually to do housing for veterans. Yeah. So, so he went out and bought like these houses to house veterans, like the, who were homeless and things of that nature. And so they have contracts for that. And, and actually, there's a lot more opportunities within that space. Um, and so his second contract was, I can't remember exactly, I think it was like some photography or something to that. Yeah, too. So I have, I have um, a house in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. that right now it's vacant. Mm -hmm. So possibly I could figure out a way to lease that house to the government. Absolutely. For more than I Absolutely. would ever lease it to anybody else. Absolutely. Ever. Absolutely. And I won't have to think about it anymore. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wow, and they and they also they also lease commercial property, so the government is like they're always actively looking for commercial properties to lease, mm -hmm. um, warehousing to lease, and their their leases are like twenty years, <laughs> so twenty year long money, and and they do it for like 
20 million a year like it's and they do it for way more than you're going to get from an individual for way more absolutely oh man this is making my head hurt oh my goodness yeah (laughs) not head hurt you're not making my head hurt in a bad way you're making my head hurt in a good way way. okay give us one more success story yeah okay so um so i have another i have another client her name um is kim actually she's she's one of the rock stars as well so kim actually teaches diversity and inclusion so Mm -hmm. she's a trainer so Mm -hmm. she trains the trainers Mm -hmm. and so basically um of course right now with racial inequalities and all these things Mm -hmm. like being the thing now more agencies are looking for ways to educate their agencies on how to avoid or how to be more inclusive and so anyway she's trying to figure out how to actually sell that service to the government i helped her get in position and one day for a i think she said she's probably spent like eight hours it probably wasn't even a whole eight hours it it probably wasn't even a whole eight hour but one day was twenty six thousand dollars for her to go actually it was a one hour it was a it was a one hour training that she did um for twenty six thousand dollars one hour, like one hour training. That's basically saying that you you build the government twenty six thousand dollars an hour. Mm, and they happily pay you. And they happily paid her. In fact, she's done a a couple of those wow. <laughs> since then. Wow. Yeah. So understand that the government is paying you with money they've collected from tax collect from tax from taxpayers, mm-hmm. right? So they're not nearly as stressed out about how much they pay. In fact, they are incentivized to overspend. Because if they don't overspend, they won't be able to get their cover their, the their, budgets. their budgets renewed. Yep. Right. right. That, and that may not even approve for the next year for the same amount or more. Right. Right. So they they're incentivized to actually spend too much money. Right. And when they spend too much money, then then they're out of money by the end of their fiscal year. So yes. now they can ask for more money the next year so they can overspend again. Absolutely. It's, Absolutely. It's it's mind. It's crazy how it how it works, right? And and I, and I get it. I so for me, I think. Yeah, but that's not cool because now they got to go overtax all these people, which is what they're doing anyway. Yeah. But they're going to do that whether you get some of that money or not. Or not. <laughs> right. So that's the part you got to understand. Yeah. They're going to they are going to overtax people and like hit people over the head with the tax hammer just because they can, regardless of whether you get some of that money or not. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So. So I know you wrote a book. So tell us the name of your book. Yeah. I see you got a, got a book there. So it's called Don't Duck the Government. They've Got Your Money. And it's all about how you can make millions pitching and winning government contracts. How you, so May I see that? So don't, don't, what is it called? Don't, don't duck, duck, the, duck government. the government. Yeah. How to make millions pitching and winning government contracts. Cause, because they've got your money. This, <laughs> that's, that's such a, isn't that a great book? Isn't that a great title, y'all? That's it. Don't duck the government. So you've been trying to sell to your next door neighbor, the person down the street, the mailman, the milkman, the dog catcher, um, people in your family who don't think that you need to be selling anything. You should give it to them for free. And the government's out here with all this money. They want to pay you. Carwana wrote a book on it called Don't Duck the Government. Yep. Um, they've, because they've got your money, how to make millions pitching and winning government contracts. So where can people go to get, get this book? book? You can go to don'tduckthegovernmentbook.com. Don'tduckthegovernmentbook.com. And um, I'd be happy to, I don't know, how much, how much does the book sell for? $27. $27. So I'd be happy to pay you for this book. Um, and um, because I want to know how not to duck the government. I'm already in your program, but <laughs> I want to know how not to duck the government. Because I sure want them throwing some of that money my way. So check. Is there anything else you do to teach people how to get these government contracts? I teach them, I teach them the what, mm-hmm. the how, mm-hmm. but most importantly, the why. Mm. Be, I teach the why because if you don't really understand what you're doing, when you bump your head up against the wall, you will give up. Mm. And so I have to teach them, here's the psychology behind all the different strategies. This is the reason why you want to do it this way so that you will have some substance when it's time for you to, when you're, when you they're know, asking you questions, when they're asking you questions and all those different things. Right. So, so, do, and don't you have a challenge or something where you teach people in Absolutely. your challenge about how to get started, how to get themselves set up and how yes. to get prepared for government contracts? Absolutely. So, um, so it's a, it's a five day challenge. Basically I show, I show you how to add an additional six figures to your business with, or more to your business by selling to gov- selling to the government. Um, so I teach them how to get pre-qualified for government contracts. And um, if you go to 
GovConChallenge.com. That's GovConChallenge.com. G-O-V-C-O-N-C-H-A-L-L-E-N-G-E. Dot com. Dot com. Uh-huh. Go yep. challenge. Go. GovCon Challenge. GovConChallenge.com. Yep. Okay. Mm-hmm. Which stands for Government Contracts Challenge. Challenge. Dot com. Okay. So you can actually, um, you know, get yourself registered um, for the challenge, and I walk you through exactly what you need to do to position yourself to start landing these lucrative contracts. Um, because it definitely the government has your money. A lot of times people, like, they duck the government because they think about taxes or they think about um, all these, like, getting audited and all this stuff, right? But literally, you know, the Bible says, I will make your enemy your footstool. Not saying the government is your enemy, but if you look at the, the government as an enemy because of taxes and because of these things, well, this literally shows you how to make that enemy your footstool, mm. like to make it create your financial wealth and legacy, to make mm. it change your business and your your family's life, right? Wow! By paying you, <laughs> to and they gotta pay. They're, they're, they gotta pay. I, it I anyway. know what some of you are thinking, yeah. and I because I, I can hear your thoughts right now. I'm hearing them come through, through <laughs> YouTube right now, and I know you're thinking, yeah, but but they're gonna they're gonna be taxing people. They're gonna tax those people anyway. They're gonna tax me every month. They're gonna tax really? you every month. All Carwana is saying, like, they wanna pay, they gotta pay, they're going to pay somebody. Yeah. And if you don't get set up, <laughs> excuse me, if you don't get set up to start winning some of those government contracts, you're not keeping the government from paying, you're just keeping them from paying, paying you. you. <laughs> yes. Wow. Absolutely. That's mind blowing. Mm -hmm. That's mind blowing. So when is your next, well, I mean, obviously how often do you do a challenge let me ask you that so i do it every month actually every month yeah every month so every yeah. month so if you go to govconchallenge.com mm -hmm. whenever the next challenge is it'll let you know how yep. much is the challenge so it's only 97 dollars. it's for actually the, for the for the general um mm -hmm. but i highly recommend that people become vip which is 297 simply because you get to actually sit in the room with me and ask questions virtual the virtual rooms of zoom and ask questions about how this pertains to your business and the things that i'm going to be showing you and teaching mm. you how does it pertain to your business and how you can leverage the information um to get results faster and to mm. literally change your life and so it's wow. definitely recommended to become vip gotcha so for two hundred ninety-seven dollars, you're going to teach people how to get started in this new game of government contracts. Absolutely. And get paid left, right, and center. Yes. Carwana, not even no exaggeration. One of the most mind-blowing interviews I've ever had. Like my mind is blown to a thousand pieces. Thank you. I've, it's going to take us. We're, our cleaning crew is going to have to come in and clean up all of the brain splatter all over this room because my mind is blown. Um, what? Final words would you say to people watching right now on YouTube who are contemplating government contracts, or maybe they're not contemplating government mm -hmm. contracts, but they're an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. they're struggling to eke out a meager existence, they're wanting to end the year strong this year or begin next year strong. Yeah. What would you say to those people yeah. about taking their life to another level? I would say if you really want to change your life and take your life and your business to the next level, you have to tap into this multi-trillion dollar spin because like you said, it's already happening. They're already going to be spending money with someone and they want to spend it with you. So why say no? Especially if you started a business to be highly profitable, then why chase customers and struggle in business when you can actually go after the customer who's already looking for you mm. and actually pay you leaps and bounds and so that you can grow your revenues by quantum leaps. This mm. is a way to infuse quantum revenues into your bank account mm. by doing business with, with the government. There is no other platform, there's no other type of business model that I've ever seen that works this well. Mm. Um, and so you definitely want to um, basically uh, do business with the government if you're looking to I definitely want to do business yeah. with the government. It, it, Y'all no might not want to, but I want to do business <laughs> with the government. I'm ready right now. Go get me some of them contracts. <laughs> so hopefully this has been really beneficial to y'all. Like, I've already had conversations with Carwana. I'm already in her class. Like, and this was beneficial to me, right? So, so if this was helpful for you, like the channel, comment, subscribe, um, Hit the notification bell so when we do a new YouTube video, you get notified. And man, don't miss out on this. Like, go and get registered with uh, Carwana's channel. Uh, I mean, her challenge, not her channel, her challenge. Um, and um, so that you can learn how to get government contracts for whatever. If you do drywall, if you do hair, if you do makeup, if you do whatever, um, uh, landscaping or whatever so that you can get government contracts 
to do things with the government that you're doing for regular customers right now. I, it'll change your life. Absolutely. Well, at least it seems like it will. I, I can't speak from experience yet. Oh, but you talk to me this time next year. I won't have a. I won't have. I'm gonna have a testimony. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm gonna have a story to tell. Let me tell you. So good stuff, Carwana. Thank, thank you, you for thank sharing you. this valuable information with the people who view our YouTube channel. I appreciate you thank so you. much. Thank you. Thank you so much. And congratulations on all your success. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. Appreciate. All right. You. All right, guys. Follow her. Like, get her on her challenge. Get her book. Don't miss out on this opportunity. Peace out, Cub Scouts. Peace.